Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Wednesday, October 28th. Today is the day the Church celebrates the feasts of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Our Old Testament reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice in all that I command you today, with all your heart and with all your soul, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you. And he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, that you may possess it and he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the voice of the Lord, and keep all his commandments that I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, as he took delight in your fathers, when you obey the voice of the Lord your God, to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in the book of the law, when you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life, that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Our writing this morning is from Martin Chemnitz. Martin Chemnitz was uh, of the generation of reformers that came after uh, Martin Luther. Uh, you get our 
church newsletter. Uh, there will be a short biography of Martin Chemnitz this month, but the short version is uh, he was a great uh, Lutheran pastor and theologian. Uh, he wrote several books, the probably largest of which is the four-volume epic uh, examination of the Council of Trent, which was the council the Roman Catholic Church convened in response to the Protestant Reformation, and he addresses it point by point uh, in four volumes. Uh, outlining exactly what Lutherans believe each and confess. And in the Book of Concord, he wrote the uh, Formula of Concord and the Epitome with a couple of other authors, uh, mostly him, though. Uh, and he wrote some wonderful devotional materials. Uh, so he was a very round, well-rounded, very smart guy, uh, very much a second Martin Luther. In fact, in the Reformation, they have a, this little saying, if the second Martin hadn't come, the first Martin would not have stood, because after Luther died, the Lutherans started to get a little spongy on their doctrine, and Martin Chemnitz uh, kept them on the straight and narrow path. And he writes, The gospel speaks of righteousness, salvation, and eternal life. The law of Moses clearly says in Deuteronomy 30.19, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Compare with Romans 7.10. These statements must not be understood as applying only to the concerns of this life, for in Luke 10.25 and following, when the scribe says, What shall I do to gain eternal life? Christ replies, What is written in the law? This do, and you shall live. Therefore, what is the difference between the doctrine of the law and the doctrine of the gospel? The law sets forth righteousness, salvation, and eternal life, to be sure, but on the condition that he who does these things shall live by them. Romans 10.5 Matthew 19.17, Luke 10.28, Romans 2.13. Therefore it is the heart of the doctrine of the law that good works are necessary for salvation, so that without them it is impossible for a person to be saved, because this is impossible for the law in that I, it was weak through the flesh, Romans 8.3, and thus had become the ministration of death, sin, and condemnation, 2 Corinthians 3.7. Therefore, the gospel offers us righteousness, salvation, and eternal life apart from our works, freely, for the sake of the obedience of the Son of God, our mediator, to be received by faith alone. Romans 4, 5, Galatians 3, 22. And today is the day the church commemorates the lives of St. Simon and St. Jude Apostles. In the lists of the Twelve Apostles, the 10th and 11th places are occupied by Simon the Zealot, or Canaanian, and by Jude, or Judas, not Iscariot, but of James, who is apparently known also as Thaddeus. According to early Christian tradition, Simon and Jude journeyed together as missionaries to Persia, where they were martyred. It is likely for this reason, at least in part, that these two apostles are commemorated on the same day. Simon is not mentioned in the New Testament apart from the lists of the Twelve Apostles. Thus he is remembered and honored for the sake of his office, and thereby stands before us in eternity, as in his life and ministry on earth, in the name instead of Christ Jesus our Lord. We give thanks to God for calling and sending Simon, along with Jude and all of the Apostles, to preach and teach the Holy Gospel, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness, and to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jude appears in John's Gospel on the night of our Lord's betrayal and the beginning of his passion, asking Jesus how it is that he will manifest himself to the disciples, but not to the world. The answer that Jesus gives to this question is a pertinent emphasis on this festival day. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Surely, both Jude and Simon exemplified, in life and death, their love for Jesus and their faith in his word. Not only are we thus strengthened in our Christian faith and life by their example, but above all, we are encouraged by the faithfulness of the Lord in keeping his promise to them to bring them home to himself in heaven. There they live with him forever, where we shall some day join them. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As always on Wednesdays, our Wednesday prayer is the shorter version of the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord, to comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you chose your servants, Simon and Jude, to be numbered among the glorious company of the apostles. As they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so may we, with ardent devotion, make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.